Detroit, Michigan, a 16-year-old senior from Central High School. She's a pop vocalist. Her name is Frida Farley Payne. Tell me a little more about yourself, Frida. Well, Mr. Mack. My true love is jazz. In Detroit, coming up as a teenager, most of my training and experience in the business music-wise had been mostly jazz and big band. I mean, I was singing with big bands when I was 14 years old. When everybody was trying to get into that uh, pop or rock and roll thing that was just starting out, she wanted to go the jazz rock. What kind of things do you like to sing? Jazz, mostly. Yeah. All right, stand back there and I'll make Detroit proud of you. When she sang at those shows, we were shocked. Everybody was like, whoa. This moment on, you and me, dear, only two for two, dear. Frida always had her own style. She was gifted with her own sound and her own interpretation. When you hear Frida Payne, you don't get her confused with anybody else. Frida is a real singer, singer, and her technique is so perfect that sometimes you wonder if it's actually her singing. Can anybody be that good? Everybody was very impressed with her singing skills. She had a wide range of opportunities. I sang for Jimmy Wilkins' big band. Uh, I sang on the radio on a show called Don Large's Make Way for Youth every Saturday from the time I was 13 till I was 16. So uh, my experience was coming from the pop, jazz, standard feel. Ben, ben. Motown started, all of this talent just started coming together and, uh, and uh, they were all jumping at the chance to be on records. A lot of us, or most of us got that chance, you know, and some of us were very successful at it, including Frida. I was always on talent contests and, and I'd be winning the talent contest. She had people always approaching her, wanting her to uh, appear at, at clubs or come sign with their labels. Here's this guy, Barry Gordy. He was a songwriter. He had already had a couple of hits with uh, Jackie Wilson. And I guess he was looking for talent, somebody to work with. And, and he saw me as this young girl. And he wrote three songs for me. And they were all kind of popish. We went into the studio called United Sound on West Grand Boulevard, which was the main recording studio in Detroit. And he would just drill those songs into my head, me rehearsing those songs. He was such a taskmaster. Frida's constantly uh, looking for new projects. She doesn't shy away from, from anything. She is not just a one-trick pony. She can sing lots of different styles of music. She can do whatever she wants. There's no limit. She's been doing it her whole life. It was 1968, going into 69. I'd had a record deal, a couple of record deals already. I had moved out of Detroit. I was living in New York trying to seek my fame and fortune. And that's when Brian Holland called me up. We talked and I said, look at you, you're a big star now. Holland, Doge and Holland, famous producers. He said, yeah, but we just left Motown and formed our own label called Invictus. Maybe you'd like to come over and, and be with us. Frida Payne has always had a plan, whether it be uh, theatrical, whether it be R&B, whether it be pop. There's never a false move. I flew back to Detroit, uh, signed with Invictus, and then a year later I had a number one record. I had Band of Gold. Would you please welcome Frida Payne? It was very powerful. It was very catchy. And the imagery of, of that band of gold, no one had sung about that before. All of that together just knocked people out. Plus, she was absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't hurt to look good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> After I got the hit of Band of Gold, it's sort of like I got the feeling that they expected me to be this soul singer, you know, and I'm not. It has made it more difficult for me to be accepted as a jazz artist. Like sugar. But it's a blessing to me. It's a blessing. Because that's where, that's sort of like my calling card. People think, well, okay, we know her for Band of Gold. But she does so much more. You'd be 
she's a total package. I mean, this is a woman who can sing many genres. She can act. She's made movies. They're still running your life, allowing you to live only until they want you dead. Then bam, you're dead. If it's just a chance, I'm going to have to take. And she can dance. She's photogenic beyond belief. She's charismatic. Frida is a great storyteller. Obviously, she's talented, and talent always survives. She lasts because her gift lasts. Mm -hmm. I see my legacy in show business as being one of survival and having a profound love of the art of performing. She, she has such grace, and it's so nice to see that in, in someone who's been in this business for years, and they still have grace. You got to have a tough skin, you know, to be in this business, and she has that. Maintaining a certain amount of class about myself. That's how I see myself. That's my legacy. To see her go full circle right now is kind of a cool thing. It's almost as if she's reinventing herself as her original self. As a jazz singer.